Let's talk about the squeeze theorem. By the way, this is also called the pinching theorem, and it's also called the sandwich theorem. So first I'll state the theorem, and then we're gonna do some examples to show you how to actually use it. So the squeeze theorem says the following. It says, suppose that uh, we have two conditions. So I'm gonna phrase it in my own words. The first condition, is that uh, I guess I'll use h of x is less than or equal to f of x which is less than or equal to say g of x and let's just say this is for all x in some interval so in some interval containing c and this this doesn't actually have to be true at c so I'll say except possibly at C itself. So except possibly at C itself. So you have this inequality. And the second condition is that you have some limits. So let's see. So basically if the limit as H, uh, the limit of H as X approaches C exists. So we have the limit of h of x as x approaches c, let's say it's equal to l, and let's say this one also approaches l, so the limit as x approaches c of g of x is l. Then we have the following. So basically what's happening is we have this function here f, and it's being squeezed between these two other functions between h and g, so it's trapped in the middle, and then as x approaches c, uh, this one approaches L, and then this one approaches L, but this one's trapped in the middle, so it must also approach L. So that's what the squeeze theorem says. So then, we have these two conditions. Then, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is also equal to L. So basically, if we have this function and it's squeezed between these other two functions, or pinched, or sandwiched, I don't know why they use that word, uh, then if these other functions approach an equal limit, so it's L in both cases where L is a real number, then the limit of F is also going to be equal to L. So let's just do an example um, of this. And this is you know typically taught in um, you know Calc 1 courses, uh, depending on you know where you take the course and who your teacher is, um, you know, the level of difficulty will vary. A lot of times they'll just give you the inequality. Um, let's force ourselves to have to come up with it. Let's make it harder. And it's not that hard, but let's just raise the bar just a little bit. Let's find this limit here. Let's say x approaches zero of classic example, x times the sine of one over x. Classic example here. So let's evaluate uh, this limit here. I love this theorem. So if you plug in zero, obviously it doesn't work because uh, you have one over zero here inside the sine function. So it's a huge epic failure. So we have to create uh, this inequality. Right? And there's a couple ways to do it. Um, you can invoke the absolute value function. You can use that. I used to always do it that way, but then I realized that a lot of people had a hard time understanding that. So I'm going to do it a different way. So note, in general, in general, you have the following inequalities. If you remember from trig, uh, the range of the sine function uh, is from negative 1 to 1 inclusive. Same thing with cosine. So sine x is less than or equal to one and greater or equal to negative one. And this is for all x, right, for all x. Remember, sine is defined on the entire real line. So this is true for all x. So here, uh, we're gonna start by using this on this here. So I'm gonna write this, sine of one over x is less than or equal to one and greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, this is one way to do it. So you start by, by basically uh, writing down a lower bound and an upper bound. This is called an upper bound. This is called a lower bound uh, for the sine function. Then you say, hey, wait a minute, um, I'm missing an x, right? Because there's an x in the problem. So what you do is you multiply all of this by x. This is negative x less than or equal to x sine one over x 
less than or equal to x. I basically start here. This is so if I was doing this on my own, like if I was like, you know, speed doing this problem, like if I wasn't making a video and showing other people in the world how to do it, I would start with this. This is how I do it. So you can just start here. Uh, and then now you just have a formality, right? Because you 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 have your inequality, right? Your functions in the middle, that's what you care about. And you have these other functions here. So now you just have to show that they approach L. So what's L? <laughs> well, it's pretty easy because X is approaching zero. So let's, let's find out. So we have to take the limit here, the limit as X approaches zero of negative X. Well, what is this? Well, you can just plug in zero. And remember when you do that, that's when you drop the limit signs. This is minus zero. And so that's equal to zero. Good stuff. And then you do this one, the limit as X approaches zero of X. Again, you plug in the zero, you drop the limit sign, so you get zero. So basically, this approach is zero, this approach is zero. So by the squeeze theorem, this should also approach zero. So you just have to write it down. So thus, therefore, hence, thus, by the, here's where you can have fun. You can say pinching, but I'm not gonna do it. By the squeeze theorem, by the squeeze theorem, uh, our original limit, so if you're lazy, you can just say our OG limit, but I'll say the limit as x approaches 0 of x times the sine of 1 over x is equal to 0. This is almost like a little proof, so if you want, you can put like a little QED, uh, but I'll put a little box with an x. So yeah, that's the squeeze theorem. So simple example let let's go ahead and do another one why not just so you can get some more practice i'm going to switch colors let's go to orange yeah orange is okay i need i need to, i need some new colors let's go back to green limit as x approaches zero usually it's zero you can change it to where it's not zero but this is a pretty easy example let's do x squared cosine of uh, oh, we're in the year 2022, right? So 2022 over X to the, let's be silly, 2021, that was last year. <laughs> so if you plug in zero here, it's also not going to work because you get cosine of 2022 over zero to the 2021. You're going to get division by zero, so it's not going to work. So this time, since it's our second example, I'm going to show you the way I would do it. I'm just going to do it the way I do it. So we know that this is a squeeze theorem problem. And so how do you know that? Experience. So whenever you have like x times a sign and there's some issue like this, like 2 over x, 3 over x squared, or x times a cosine, same issue, you can apply this, this technique, which you've, you're seeing here in this video. Um, just like before, sine is between negative 1 and 1. We can do the same thing with cosine. So, so just I'll write it in a different color over here cosine of x is less than or equal to 1 and greater or equal to negative 1. And this is for all x, right? This is for all x. So here I'm going to start by just taking this whole thing. x squared cosine of 2022 over x to the 2021, okay? And this is less than or equal to, it's less than or equal to, so we know that the cosine is less than or equal to 1. So this is less than or equal to x squared times 1, which is x squared. Again, the cosine piece is less than or equal to 1 by this inequality here. So this is less than or equal to x squared times 1, which is x squared. That's how I do it. Saves writing. Greater than or equal to, I'm reading it backwards, <laughs> right? It's greater than or equal to, even though it's a less than or equal to sign, I'm reading it backwards. So cosine is greater than or equal to negative one, but it's being multiplied by this. So it's greater than or equal to negative x squared. You see how that's the, the thought process. That's the key stuff, right? That's the stuff that really helps people. Okay, so now we can take the limits. So we just, this is obviously gonna go to zero. This is obviously gonna go to zero. Therefore, what's in the middle is gonna go to zero by the squeeze theorem. So now we just have to say that. I'm gonna switch to yellow. So the limit as x approaches zero, of this piece here, negative x squared. If we plug in zero here, we're gonna get negative zero squared, which is zero. The limit, do this one now, as x approaches zero of x squared, you plug in zero, you're just gonna get zero, so. 
So now we can say by the squeeze theorem, whatever is squeezed in the middle or pinched in the middle or sandwiched in the middle, its limit is also going to be zero. So thus, by the squeeze theorem, I'm gonna write squeeze theorem, uh, the limit as x approaches zero, computer's slowing down here, my writing is a little slower, of x squared, there we go. My, my computer slowed down for a moment. I was writing uh, and it took a minute. I don't know if you saw that. It took a minute for uh, the pen to work. So I was like, oh, okay, let me slow down. Cosine of 2022 over x to the 2021 is equal to zero. Really cool. And there's other examples uh, besides these, but these are the ones that you typically find in books. Like x times the sine function like this, sine one over x, or like x times um, the cosine function. So typical examples um, that you would see uh, in, in most calculus classes.